All right, welcome to the lab part of the cell replication and patterns of, in patterns of inheritance lab. So this is going to be actually a lot of fun. Well, most of them are a lot of fun, right? Um, so I talked in the, in the lecture part about the cell cycle. Um, and so if the, first, the first thing you want to do is um, on page um, two of your handout, um, you're going to have a root tip and um, we're going to ask you to um, kind of identify some of the things you see there. Um, and Larry's got like different um, different pictures of the different um, root of, of the different well actually I'll go I'll go hang on I'll go straight to well before we do that so here you'll you'll see pictures in your handout pictures kind of like this that shows you pictures of anaphase and prophase and um, and so what Larry wants you to do um, is or what we want you to do is to then identify so there's your anaphase there's your prophase and what we want you to do is we want you to identify some of the structures. So identify um, the chromosomes or identify um, the, um, the cell plate right here or in, in the, um, the cleavage furrow. Um, or the spindle apparatus and those different kinds of things. So there's lots of pictures. And now I'm going to go to the thing, go straight there. So you'll see lots of different pictures, lots of individual pictures where you're asked to identify these different parts. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's the first part that we want you to do. The next part we want you to do is we want you to look at these. So this is a picture of an onion root tip. And if you actually wanted to see one of those things kind of live-ish, um, the, um, the virtual microscopes have some onion root tips. Um, and the, the, the Google site that I have for you also have some onion root tips. So what we want you to do is we want you to take, and the easiest way to go, the, go about this, to basically just go top to bottom um, and identify 100 cells of what, what um, this is actually a lot easier on, on, on this than it is under the microscope. Under the microscope, this is a pain because they're so hard to see. Um, but what we want you to do here is we want you to identify 100 cells um and define what they are and then once you've done that um, we want you to fill in here um in the this chart and i'm going to go back to go to this chart i'm going to go back to the powerpoint real quick uh, because on the powerpoint i'm showing you what we're trying to get you to do with kind of fantasy numbers so so you've got this so you got a hundred. You're gonna pick a hundred of these, uh, and you're gonna de determine the phase for hundred one of these, um, and then you're gonna multiply the percentage of how many there are in relation to the total, um, and figure out what the timing is based on that. So this makes a lot more sense when you see the numbers. So let's say for kicks. Um, We've got, um, we're scoring 100 nuclei, and these numbers are completely made up just, just to help you with the numbers. So let's say for kicks um, that for your interface, you counted 40 nuclei in interface, tw interface uh, 25 in prophase, 20 in metaphase, 10 in anaphase, and 5 in telophase. That adds up to 100. Now you're going to calculate what the percentage of the total is, which if you counted 100 of them, it's the same number, right? So 40% of the total nuclei you scored were in interface, 25% were in uh, prophase, 20% were in meta, 20 in ana, and 5 in telophase. 
Now, since this is a snapshot in time, as we've determined earlier, uh, since this is a snapshot in time, in 0.4 fraction of the time, uh, so what you need to then do, is if the total time is 16 hours, you multiply 0.4, 40% becomes 0.4, uh, 0.4 times 16, which gives you 6.4 hours, or 0.25, which gives you times times 16, which gives you four hours, and you just do that. And so you're gonna do just exactly that with those nuclei, right? And um, if you wanna go cross-eyed again, and you wanna think about how this really works, this is the same idea again that we had earlier, right? So each cell goes through this cycle um, in the same sequence approximately. And then if you cut the onion root tip at a specific point in time, this specific point in time then reflects um, the scoring of where everybody was at. Um, so that's part one of the exercise. So uh, on page five, you're gonna do this calculation. Um, on page six, there's a couple of questions um, that we want you to answer. And um, yeah, there's, there's probably not too many wrong questions that you can answer um, there. Uh, and then we come to the fun part of creating your virtual child. Um, so when you're creating your virtual child, you're going to do this with a, um, with a coin flip. Um, and in the lab, we usually do this. We, we have two of you get together. So by all means, pick your kid or pick a friend or just make babies all by yourself. Um, so you're going to have, um, you either can have two coins or you have one, one coin that's been flipped by the father or by, by the mother. Um, and on page, um, so you have, you have all the different features you're flipping for. Uh, so you're not picking your own features. You have a whole list of features that are from on page 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13 of your handout. And you're filling out on page 14 of your handout. So um, on page 14, you're going to fill out the parents' names. Um, you're going to give the child a name. And the first thing you're going to flip for is the sex of the child. Now, the way the sex is determined of a human is it's actually the father that determines the sex. Because as we know, women have two X chromosomes and men have an X and a Y. And you can barely see this if I could change this color into something that you can actually see. So women have two X chromosomes and males have an X and a Y. So if each parent passes on one of these chromosomes, women only have X's to pass on. So there's nothing different what a woman passes on to a boy or to a girl. Um, now a Y, so a Y chromosome. Now a Y chromosome doesn't do much else other than just determine the sex of the child because it's itty bitty little tiny little chromosome. But it's super important because no more Y chromosome, no more boys, and no more boys, no more sexual reproduction. So very very important. But um, so you're gonna flip for the sex of the child. And I think, I forget if, if Larry tells you which one is heads or tails. Um, uh, here we go. So if heads is flipped for the father, um, that's a Y-bearing sperm. And so then the, the baby is a boy. Um, and then you're going to flip for all the other traits. And I'm going to go through a couple of those with you just um, to make sure that you understand what you're doing. So let's say... How did we say? We said heads is dominant. So heads is dominant, uh, tails is recessive. So, um, and as, as we said, the dominant genotype is always, deter is always uh, the capital letter, right? So in this particular case, 
the mother flips. And in this case, the mother would have flipped. Can I write this up? Hang on. Ah. So if the mother flips heads and the father flips tails, then you would record this as because the mother flipped heads, you write in the mother genotype for the heads, you write the, the capital R. For the father's genotype, because he flipped tails, you write lowercase r. The genotype of the child, you simply combine both of those together. So you've got the big R and your little r. So the little the, the child is big R, little r. Then you're going to look up in, in your facial traits, which is in your handout over here, what big R, little r is. And big R, little r turns out here is round face. So round face, you can put round face here. Um, since this is a simple trait, um, this is a Mendelian uh, expression. Now, some of them are a little more complicated. And uh, actually, let's go real quick through the next one. Um, Go look in your lab handout as I'm going through this. So for the chin size, we've got big V and little v. So let's say we do this. Let's say both both parents, let's say uh, the father and the mother both flip tails. So in this case, you would then put a little v for the mother and a little v for the father. You would put little v, little v for the child. And that would be a less prominent chin because that's what you're looking up. And since it's, again, a simple gene that has just a dominant and a, and a recessive trait, um, that's uh, Mendelian genetics. Now, an example of non-Mendelian genetics is uh, skin color. So skin color is an example of polygenic uh, inheritance where you actually have um, three different genes that are located at three different loci um, that produce skin color. Um, now, the way it's uh, calculated is actually still pretty simple. So what you're going to do is, is each parent flips three times and keeps track. So in this particular case, uh, the mother would have flipped head, head, and tail, whereas the father would have flipped tail, head, and head. So, um, and then you're gonna observe once you once you've done that. Um, so a flip of head, head, and tail gives you a capital A, capital B, and a lowercase C, and a flip of tail, head, head gives you a lowercase A capital B, capital C. Um, then you write the genotype of the child out as capital A, lowercase a, capital B, lowercase, uh, capital B, capital B, lowercase c, capital C. And then to figure out what the phenotype is, you simply count up how many capital letters you've got there. So in this particular case, it's one, two, three, four, so you have four dominant alleles, so that's dark brown. This is non-Mendelian genetics. This is polygenic. Um, and then the next one we have is we have one of incomplete dominance. Um, incomplete dominance is an example of like hair, uh, whether it's hair wavy or not wavy. So um, in this case, the mother would have uh, flipped heads. The father would have flipped tails. The genotype of, uh, genotype of the child is the combination of the two. And then again, you're looking up uh, what this is, which is wavy hair, which is incomplete non-Mendelian genetic, uh, non-Mendelian genetics. And so you're going to go through that. 
um, and fill out all the different traits that you're flipping for on page 14. And then after you do that, you're going to um, you're going to draw a child uh, and submit that too um, with your with your um, homework assignment. Uh, on page 16, you see something about tasters and non-tasters. I'm going to try to find a way. Uh, we can't do the non-taster taster thing because that requires you to actually um, taste some uh, a, a paper material. Um, and I don't even see us doing that for um, for a hybrid class because it's sticking things in your mouth just isn't really a good plan at this point in time. Um, but I'll try to think of a way how we're going to be able to do um, basically a class survey of um, what eye colors we have, whether we have a widow's peak or all of that kind of stuff, page 16. But you can skip that for the moment. What I do want to do, though, is I want to do I want to tell you my favorite story um, of how I saved someone from um, from uh, marriage. Uh, so I, I had this friend, and I'm going to go to the to the whiteboard for that one. So I had a friend who um, who came to me one day, and uh, there was this woman that he sort of kind of liked. Um, he'd met her. Um, well, I didn't think she was all that great, but either way, he thought she was pretty great. Um, and um, I hadn't seen him in a while, and I asked him how things were going. And he said to me, "Well, um, I'm I'm getting ready to marry um, this woman because she's pregnant with my child." And I said, "Really?" Um, because I really didn't think she was a very good person, and I figured she was cheating on him, and you know. So so I asked him. I said, "Are you sure it's your child?" And he says, "Yeah, absolutely." Um, I'm sure it's my child because she told me they did a blood test of the baby in utero. Um, and um, she said, uh, so I am blood type O and she knew that the father was blood type AB and the child, she says, was a, B, just like the father. And I was like, really? Are you sure? Are you sure that's your child? So as a bonus homework assignment, I promise I will solve this up for you. So when, when we're looking at um, um, the genetics of blood types. The genetic of blood types, I have to tell you this to make sure that you know what we're talking about. So there are three genes involved in the genetics of blood type. There's A, there's B, and there's O. And I'll make this as a lowercase O. O is the absence of A or B. Um, and what the genotype determines is actually what um, what decorations you have on the outside, what glycoproteins you have on the outside of your red blood cells. So you can have an A glycoprotein, or you can have a B glycoprotein on the outside of your red blood cells, or you can have no glycoprotein on the blood side, uh, on the outside of your red blood cells, or you can have an A and a B on the outside of your red blood cells. So the blood groups that we can have are A, B, AB, and O. And A, because A is dominant and B are dominant, those are both co-dominant over O, A can be a phenotype, can be a genotype of either AA or AO. And a B phenotype can be created by a BB genotype or a BO genotype. Whereas an AB phenotype can only be created 
by an AB genotype. And an OO genotype can only be determined, an O phenotype can only be created by an OO genotype because that's the recessive one. Now, the way we can figure these things out is with, with Mendelian genetics. Um, and I'm going to let you figure out the Mendelian genetics of the AB, um, uh, Mendelian genetics, um, Punnett squares. Um, I'm going to let you figure out how this works out with, with this um, in your, in your um, I'm going to, in the meantime, tell you, however, um, I'm going to show you as an example of Mendelian genetics, uh, a different story, um, which is um, the, the story of me and my dear ex-husband. Um, so I have brown eyes. My ex-husband has blue eyes. Now, brown eyes, because it's a color, brown eyes is dominant over blue eyes. So brown eyes can be determined by a genotype of either big B, big B, or big B, little b. All of that is brown. Blue eyes is recessive and also be only be determined by little b, little b. So that means we can immediately say my dear ex-husband, his uh, genotype would be little b, little b. And my cat is going to be, cat, you're going to die. I swear. God love, God love the cat. Come on. <laughs> So, um, whereas my brown eyes could either be big B, big B, or big B, little b, right? Uh, now, if I tell you that one of my parents had blue eyes, you then know that my genotype, in fact, is big B, little b, because if I have a blue-eyed parent, then one of those little b's had to come over there. Now, the way you then figure out, um, so my, my dear ex-husband, because he didn't quite understand and didn't pay attention in biology, biology class, apparently, um, he was pretty sure that he had strong manly genes, um, and he had been married before, um, and all of his children had blue eyes. So he was pretty sure that the reason why all of his children had blue eyes um, was because he had those strong manly genes, right? Um, and so let's go figure out what the odds are. I explained to him that that's not how that works because, you know, I'm a biology instructor and, you know, that's not how that works. Um, so when you do a Punnett square, you make a square, you make a square like that and you put the mom, and it doesn't matter which side you put the mom on, and it doesn't matter what side you put the dad on, but you put the mom on one side and you put the dad on the other side. And what you have to do on these squares on the top here, um, you're going to have to put the genes, which means that you have to put two genes there. So in my case, it would be a big B and a little b. And for my dear ex-husband on his side, there would be a little b and a little b. And then you just pull these things over. So you put the big pull the big B down and the little B over, the big B down and the little B over, little B down, little B over, little B down, little B over. So the odds with that mating for children was that 50% chance that they had brown eyes and 50% chance that they had blue eyes. And I am happy to report that both of our children have, in fact, brown eyes. So eh, nothing happening for those wonderful manly genes that, that he had. So I'm very proud. Um, but on that note, um, I will let you go and I will let you go uh, to your homework assignments. <laughs>